for lab 35, we need to look at using cross-site scripting in a real-world way, so fully encoded payload that goes to a page, taking the data and pushing it off to a listener. In order to do this, we'll use cross-site scripting, but I have the script already ready to go to make this demo a little bit quicker. We've got the script built over here in Burp Suite, and what it does is it just pushes off the cookies over to a listener on port 1234. So we'll need to set up a listener on port 1234. We'll get that going here in a second. We also need to encode this. We can highlight this portion in Burp Suite and just say encode as URL, and it'll do the encoding and put it down here at the bottom. And in order to get the entire thing to work, what we'll need to do is we'll need to do the encoding carefully just for the value of the parameter. So the first parameter is just is setting the page that the request is going to go to. We don't need to change that. The second parameter is the one that's vulnerable to the cross-site script, and that's target host. So if we start at the, where the data starts, which is right after the equal sign, and we just select everything all the way to the end, we'll do the encode as URL like we saw, and that'll encode everything all the way to the very end. And actually, we even see a carriage return, or actually a line feed there. It's percent zero %0a. We don't really need that, so we can just get rid of it. That's just like when you hit the enter key inside of a script. It's not necessary. We're going to carefully copy that, and we're going to need the netcat listener going before we do the script. So we'll set that up with a n for don't translate DNS names, v for verbose, l for list, and p for port. And we picked one, two, three, four. The number doesn't matter, but whatever that port number is, it has to match this port over here in the script so that the script is communicating to the port that's listening. So now that that's set up, we can find a page in our environment that's vulnerable to cross-site scripting, like this echo page here, or the DNS lookup page. It doesn't really matter. In this case, we were using the DNS lookup. If you recall, remember the, the page was set to DNS lookup in our phishing link. So, and that's fine. Either one of them will work as long as you set up the variables correctly. So we're gonna, Enter the phishing link, simulating us clicking on it. And so the script fires. And you'll notice the page is actually stuck because it's transmitted the data over to the netcat listener, but the netcat listener doesn't respond, of course. It just captures the data. Let's go back and look at the netcat listener. And we'll see that the cookie got captured and sent over. And here's the value of the cookie here. Then there's a show hints cookie after that one, and it has a value as well, and so on. Now, if we stop this listener script over here, the page will go back to normal. So now that we've done that, let's go back and take a look at the DNS lookup page itself. So to get over there, we're just going to browse to it directly. And when we use the DNS lookup page, just put any kind of value in here. We'll post to it and watch what happens inside of Burp Suite. So let's go back over to the target or proxy, I should say, and then we'll go to the history. We want to go to the last request. And notice carefully that when the page is used normally, the request is posted. But when the cross-site script fired off, that was done via a clickable link, which is a GET request. But it worked anyway. It didn't matter that the cross-site script used the GET HTTP method. The data was still captured nonetheless. Knowing that, let's go back over to the lab page. And it asked, how does method tampering make this attack easier? Well, we see from the experiment that the method tampering vulnerability allowed us to create a phishing link, a clickable link, 
rather than having to have a malicious JavaScript that did a post. So it makes the attack easier. It's not to say that the page wasn't vulnerable to cross-site scripting anyway, but by having these extra vulnerabilities like method tampering, it just makes it all that easier for a malicious agent to pull off an attack. And this goes counter to what a lot of teams think about vulnerability assessments. They get these medium level vulnerabilities in their report, or maybe even low level vulnerabilities, and think nothing of it because they're not really high severity issues. But every vulnerability counts, and every vulnerability can be used to chip away at the security of a system or make the situation worse than it already is for a high severity vulnerability like cross site scripting. So the system would be vulnerable either way, but it does help. And for that reason, this first answer here, the application allows the form to be submitted via a GET or a POST, which allows the attacker to use either phishing or wettering whole attacks. And we'll submit that answer and find that that is the correct answer. 